Okay, so I am about to get things set and moving. It's just about noon. I'd like to say hi to everybody and thank you so much for taking some time today to join on this webinar with us. This is our first uh, in a series called IT Office Hours with Andromeda Technology Solutions. So again, thank you guys for joining us. We intend to do these on a month by month basis, maybe increase frequency if um, the demand is there. But typically we're gonna cover topics related to technology, cybersecurity, and really just try to make sure we're adding some great value to you guys while also providing some education. So to kick things off, um, I don't know about you guys, but I've had a lot of coffee today. I'm a, I'm a big coffee drinker, and I would love to say thank you to you guys for joining us. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a raffle. So with that in mind, if you can locate your chat box and anytime during our session today, which should only be about 15 minutes, Throw in, are you a Dunkin' Donuts person or a Starbucks fan? Uh, and I'll make sure to randomly select and you can have a cup of coffee on me. But again, so this is gonna be about 10 to 15 minutes. I'm gonna jump right in here and get things going. Um, I'm gonna introduce myself, you know, first again, my name is Abby. Um, I've been with Andromeda for about three years now. And during that time, I have worked with our sales team, our account management teams, and currently I help manage and guide our marketing efforts. So what that means to you is it is my job to bring you guys and bring Andromeda's mission, vision, and value to life, but it's also my responsibility to make sure that we are consistently creating content and valuable educational materials for our clients and the community. After all, you know, one of the greatest defenses that any business or person has against um, cybersecurity threats and vulnerabilities is always going to be education, so it's very valuable to spend time just like this regularly engaging with topics in the cybersecurity and technology space so we can properly defend ourselves. So with that, uh, diving a little bit more into what IT office hours with Andromeda is anyway. So again, you know, we're very committed at Andromeda to educating our clients and the community on important topics regarding technology, as well as common concerns with cybersecurity threats and issues. These sessions are going to be very quick. Um, my goal will be to keep the content between 10 to 15 minutes tops, and then we will always open things up for any questions that you may have. And I would also encourage, you can always send questions at any time to your account management staff, myself, Carl, or any of the leaders on our team. Um, so these sessions are going to cover things like the scams that are hitting your businesses or attempting to hit and impact your businesses daily, tips and tricks, ways you can spot these things, um, things that you can share with your staff with respect to training. I'll also be sharing if there are ever solutions that we have available to help increase your security and help defend against the topics we cover. And then we will also spend time where it's applicable on compliance, PII, HIPAA, and a variety of other compliance standards. So for today, uh, we are going to be talking about business email compromise or BEC scams. So I did ask on the front end um, how many of you guys were familiar with this topic. I saw a few yeses, but many no's. So we're going to just kind of go over, you know, what these are. But to start things off and kind of give you a better picture about them in specifics, um, I grabbed a couple numbers here and some statistics on these types of scams. So the FBI calculated that the total loss to U.S. companies for business email compromise in 2018 was $1.2 billion dollars. With the average loss of one time, one incident from BEC, the average um, cost to the small to mid-sized business from the FBI in 2018 was $64,000, and that's up from $43,000 in 2017. So not only are we seeing an increase in the rate of incidents for these, but they're also impacting and causing more damage fiscally to you guys year after year after year. So what is a BEC scam? So the term BEC scam stands for business email compromise. It's also referred to commonly as CEO fraud. Um, cyber criminals use BEC scams to trick or convince, that's the goal, is to trick or convince your employees and staff into performing desired functions. Uh, traditionally, that's gonna be either getting your employees to hand off valuable information or data or transferring of funds. Oftentimes, criminals are going to impersonate C-level executives owners, and financial decision makers. So the reason for this is that these, again, these are email scams, so these are gonna land in your inbox, 
and a criminal is going to impersonate a C-level executive, a decision maker related to finance or an owner, because very often what they're leaning on or what they're counting on is that by impersonating a CEO or an executive, the employee is not going to think. They're going to think later and act first, because oftentimes, um, you know, when you get a request from your boss, you're going to do it, right? That's what they want you to do. So BEC scams fall into two primary categories. There's two ways that these are gonna land in your inbox and I'll kind of break those down. So the first is going to be the copycat version. So essentially what is going to happen here is a criminal is going to create what we call a spoof version of an executive's email address. For instance, I'll use the example of our CEO, Jeff Borello. Um, so Jeff's email, I'm just kidding. Jeff's email is Jeff B. That's our naming convention. Mine's Abby L. You know, anybody here, it's first name, then initial. Um, and many businesses build their emails in that way. They have one naming convention. And so what a criminal would do is they're going to take that naming convention and they're going to mimic it in a third party email, whether that's a Gmail account, a Yahoo account, or maybe something completely arbitrary. They're going to create something that looks just like the authentic email address in the hopes that when it lands in the inbox, you won't even catch that it's not the same one. So that's the copycat version. The other type of BEC scam is gonna happen when a criminal a hacker gets their hands on your actual credentials. So that could be from a phishing attack that maybe somebody fell victim to. It could be from a third party breach that was no fault of your own. Imagine you know, a target breach or uh, social media, any of those other channels. We know that very often our employees and executives, everybody, they use the same passwords over and over again. And so what can happen is that if a third party breach takes place or a phishing attack is, uh, if you fall victim to one, it, your credentials are out there and a hacker then may be able to just log into your email just like yourself. And at that point, they then have access to your contacts and are able to send out emails and request things of your employees. So those are the two primary categories that we'll focus on. So then moving forward, um, these scams, I'm going to talk about what you can look for and how to identify them, and then we'll dig into a couple samples in a moment. So first, just like any other email scam, poor grammar is big. Um, you know, misspellings, unusual verbiage, and just poor grammar in general, that's always a red flag for any type of a spam or malicious email or a BEC compromise. Um, urgency and threats. So with these, the goal again, I'm impersonating, or they are, that they're impersonating an executive. Um, they're going to try and make sure that their messages are urgent, they need immediate attention, and they may even come off as slightly threatening at times. Uh, so pay this or we're gonna face fines. I found this past due invoice, I don't know how we forgot it, we need to pay it by this time or else we're going to have this consequence. Um, I need a transfer done this morning before this time. I'm heading into a meeting. You know, any a number of urgent uh, choices there you want to be on the lookout for. Also, unusual requests. So if you're an employee, you want to speak with your employees about the fact that if they wouldn't normally be asked to do this activity by their boss or by an executive, that they should probably ask about it before they take action. And then finally, the email address is a dead giveaway when it comes to BEC scams. Um, if at any time you're receiving a message from an email address that does not match the executive or the individual that you're talking to, that should signal something and, and put the hackles up for you. So a few examples um, looking through these. Can you handle an invoice, invoice for me quick this morning? I'm running out the door to a meeting, but we need to make sure and transfer this amount of funds to this bank account. Can you handle that as soon as possible? Are you at your desk? I need you to process a wire transfer. These are all examples that I saw when looking through samples online, and these are things that you can be on the lookout for. So next is going to be kind of how you guys can protect yourself in the event or from a, a BEC scam. So first and foremost is going to be employee training events just like this, making sure that you're investing your time and your resources in getting in front of popular scams, understanding how they are used, understanding what to look for when they land in your inbox so that you can communicate that to your team. Um, here at Andromeda, we invest in our own cybersecurity training. While we do have many technicians, we also have a lot of employees just like myself who are not 
um, technicians, if you will. And so we invest in employee cybersecurity training that sends um, an email with an article, a video component with a companion quiz that assesses our performance. Um, and as a manager, you're able to kind of look into that and see where your team is at so you know where the vulnerabilities lie. So that's very important. And I would say, in my opinion, one of the, the primary things that everybody should be looking into. Um, then there's dual authentication. For anyone who isn't familiar, dual authentication is really just going to be an added layer of security on top of your password. It really does exactly what it says. It's going to add a secondary and sometimes you can even add a third way to confirm your identity. Oftentimes that's going to be done by sending a push notification or a text message with a randomly generated code to your cell phone. It could be that you have a secret question that you are the only one who knows the answer to. And this is specifically important because um, in those email hack types of attacks where they actually have your credentials, when you have dual authentication in place, it, that adds that, sec that second layer. So that the criminal, they have your password, but they don't have your phone, and they also probably don't know the answer to your personal question, making that very effective. Uh, you'll also want to limit the number of employees with the ability to perform wire transfers. Uh, a lot of these scams are very focused on fast money, and that means that it's gonna be a demand of a transfer sent to this account. And if you are able to limit the number of employees with the authority to do that, that will dramatically uh, decrease your risk. We also have available to all of our clients what I would what's called CEO fraud protection. So that is another uh, term for these types of scans. And what that is, is it going to be an integration into your uh, spam filter solution. You assign it only to specific executives that you feel are where the vulnerability lies in your company. And what it does is it's going to monitor to make sure that any third-party emails that are requesting things on behalf um, of that executive or any spoofed emails like we talked about, those Jeff Barrello at Gmail, um, it's going to identify those and alert your staff right in the message itself that this may be an email they should be cautious about. And then finally, it's going to be policies and procedures. Set those up and not just set them up, but make sure that we're taking time regularly to review the policies and procedures we have in place to verify money transfers and really any activity related to the finances. Um, we recommend that you check in with that from a technology perspective at least once a year, if not twice a year, every six months. So I had to throw this in here because one, it does show you what that CEO fraud protection looks like, but no joke, I was putting this presentation together and not 10 minutes after I finished the slide deck, uh, finished the slide deck, of course I had to edit, but you know, I had finished it and 10 minutes later, this email landed in my inbox, uh, which was a, a BEC scam. It was CEO fraud. Um, so as I mentioned, and as you know, I'm sure, Jeff Borello, that's our CEO here. And I got an email in my inbox from Jeff Borello that was asking me to purchase some gifts for the, the, the staff here. And I'm going to walk you guys through real fast just the, the high level things that you, that you could see off the bat that you could be communicating with your team that would trigger and warn them that they need to you know, not respond or at least alert your IT staff. So first, as I mentioned, um, you can see here that this email address is not actually Jeff's email. It's some third party email that somehow is meant to look like him. So that's our first red flag. If we didn't have this caution label, the second red flag for me would be that it's, it goes, hi, Abigail, I need you to get a purchase done, comma, as am planning to surprise some of the staff with gifts. So first, Jeff doesn't call me Abigail, so my boss uh, doesn't use my full name. So for anyone who has a full name, that's, that's one way for you to look at it. Um, but more important here, we've got, I need you to get a purchase done, comma, as am planning. That's not proper grammar. That's not the way Jeff speaks typically anyway. But for, for some situations, you may not have that interaction and your staff may not know that the boss or the CFO doesn't use that verbiage. Um, you can see here your confidentiality would be appreciated so as not to ruin the surprise. Email me once you get this. So that's actually clever. A lot of times these emails are gonna ask for immediate action in the form of a purchase, uh, a paid invoice, or a transfer. This one actually asked me to engage which is something that would make your defense go down. You'd go, okay, I'm going to respond to this email. But that's when you're on the hook because now I'm, this person's going to start asking for what they want and you kind of have leaned in. So last but not least, uh, one of the other final things that stands out for me in this email at least is that it ends with regards, comma, sent from my iPhone. So this one's going to be important for you to note as well because this is a popular technique that criminals are going to use. They're going to throw 
like the sent from iPhone or the sent from phone signal in at the end of the message. And that's because it's going to change the way that you receive the tone and the urgency of the message, right? Because typically we only send emails when we're from our phones if we're on the go, right? So this is my boss who's apparently on the go, who needs something from me and is messaging me from their phone. So the urgency, maybe some of the typos, all of those things are kind of forgiven. But good thing for me, the one thing that I know that the criminal doesn't know is that Jeff doesn't have an iPhone. So that's also another tell. So this was just a, a perfect coincidence. I'll, 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 I'll give it, and I'm lucky that we that I know how to avoid this scam, but this could have landed in any one of uh, the staff inboxes at your offices and could have caused a lot of issue and stress and drama. Um, but the last thing I guess I should point out here is that with the CEO fraud protection implemented and assigned to Jeff and other executives at our company, we do have that added layer of protection, and you know our employees are alerted just as yours would if you had that um, set up and functioning for you. So that kind of rounds out our presentation for today. As promised, we kept it as brief as possible. Um, and now I'm going to open things up for any questions that you guys may have. I will encourage you as well, if you have to run, feel free to send any questions you may have to my email. I've got that included here or to your account management staff. And I will make it known that um, we're recording this session and I will send that out to you guys as well. Okay, I've got one here. So does this stuff really happen at smaller companies? Well, I can say Andromeda is, you know, a 50 employee small to mid-sized business, just like many of you guys. And these are hitting our inboxes. So I know they're definitely hitting everybody else's inboxes. Um, you know, I do speak with fellow marketing managers at other IT companies across the nation. Um, and these are definitely hitting inboxes everywhere. A big target is definitely going to be companies where you do have wire transfer activity. These criminals are looking out for companies that work in industries where that is required. Um, but really this hits pretty much anyone and everyone. I was on the phone just last week with a firm um, where an email like this had hit their inbox and I believe it had requested, it was just a wire transfer for a past due invoice and I think it was a couple thousand dollars. Um, one of the things that these criminals will do is they, they pay attention to new hires. So this firm actually had a new HR manager who had just started within the last month and um, sure enough, you know, they saw the email come through, they responded, they were in the middle of something, just like the rest of us, always multitasking. Um, and so they just sent it right through. And by happenstance, one of the, I think it was, what did they say? It was the COO got an alert that a transfer had been submitted. And they, luckily, they were able to, they, they communicated with the bank immediately and they were able to stop it. Um, and on the phone with the bank, the teller or the person they were speaking with had said that had they not called, I think it was, I think maybe within five minutes or so, I mean, it would have gone through and it would have been irreversible. So yes, this absolutely is impacting businesses of all shapes and sizes. I've got, yes, another one of our clients. Absolutely, it does impact. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think if there's any, if there are any other tidbits that I'd want to share with you guys about the topic, but... No. Is training in the CEO fraud protection expensive or pricey? Um, you know, I mean, really, no. It's not something that is a big cost to the business. I think that our employee training program, I believe it starts out, I can get the numbers on that, but I think it's just a couple hundred bucks a month for our entry level, you know, the first tier. It's done by different user counts across the board. Um, when it comes to any number of these things, they're, they're really just meant to assist you and help you, so they're not very expensive. They're really just add-on features more than anything. But I think, I mean, I'd have to give you specifics related to what the price point would be for yourself uh, and your business, depending on your size and your needs. All right. So it's looking to me like we've kind of answered the majority of the questions that you guys have. Um, I got a good question here on pricing that I can share with everybody. Good question here, obviously, on you know the types of businesses this impacts, and I can get some information based on that. But I just want to close out by saying just once more, thank you guys very much for taking this time. Um, like I said, we're going to try and do this once a month. So I'm going to get right to work on creating our next topic and content. So you've got my contact information. 
If you've got a question, a comment, a concern, if there's a topic that you're interested in, I'm more than all ears just because I want to create stuff that's valuable and worth your time as well. But I would just like to say thank you again, everybody, for taking some time to join me, and I hope that you found this time as valuable as possible. <laughs>